Hello, East Texas, and hello to everyone watching from wherever you're watching from. I do want to tell you that I am in the tail end of recovering from the coronavirus, and it is no joke, my friends. I was so fortunate that I didn't have fever, I didn't have any breathing trouble, I didn't have the aches and pains, but I have absolutely been drained of energy and have no taste or smell whatsoever. Please take this seriously. You do not want to give this to anyone that you love, and you do not want to get it. So please take care of yourselves. That being said, though, I think we all are craving good news. And when I saw this news about this, the planets Jupiter and Saturn aligning in perfect transition position cosmically on December 21st, I couldn't wait to share it with you. Apparently, this news has caused some people to speculate if, in fact, it might have been a planet alignment like we'll see on Monday that was the Bethlehem star that led the Magi to the manger in Bethlehem after Jesus was born. Patrick Hartigan, who's a professor of physics and astronomy at Rice University, said, alignments between these two planets are rather rare, occurring once every 20 years or so. But this conjunction is exceptionally rare because of how close the planets will appear to one another. Well, exceptionally rare is kind of an understatement because the last time that this happened was in 1623 and before that, 1226. And neither of those happened in December. So this near alignment, astronomers say, won't happen again until March 2080. And here's really good news. Normally you have to wake up in the middle of the night to see all these exciting cosmic things. Not this year. NASA says to look for the planets low in the southwest corner of the, of the sun setting. Um, right about an hour after the sun sets. So mark your calendars. You probably won't want to miss this. I wonder if God actually used this unique alignment of planets to get the attention of the Magi so many thousands of years ago. Many Bible readers and other um, historians and scientists have speculated what might have happened and how that star was so played such an amazing role in the birth stories. Modern astron astronomers have said it could have been a comet or it could have been all kinds of natural occurrences. But all those natural occurrences cannot explain the star described in Matthew chapter 2. The gospel tells us that the star remained stationary while the wise men were in Jerusalem, then led them not only to Bethlehem, but to the precise location of Jesus, where it stopped over the place where the child was. Matthew is clearly describing a miraculous event, something that was God-driven, and it was directed, obviously, in the scene by God himself. And as difficult as 220 has been, I really think we need this little bit of joy as Christmas soon approaches. What we should focus on in the story, I think, is that regardless of whether the Bethlehem star is an astronomical event or a divine event, it should remind us that this was God beckoning the wise men to come. This was the Lord using the star to call on them to come to Bethlehem and see. They dropped everything and left to go find that Christ child. And I think it's a reminder to all of us that we obviously have to uh, keep our eyes focused on God's call in our life, whether it is a um, a star in the sky or some other droplet of grace that God is pouring out upon us to try to get our attention. While God doesn't force us to follow him, 
He will never stop offering us subtle invitations to look for him. This is the grace of God that comes before we even know him. It's the grace of God that he showers down on us before we even know who God is. He's getting our attention, wooing us, calling us, trying to get us connected to a relationship with him. I love how Isaiah 65 in the message translation says it this way. God says, I've made myself available to those who haven't bothered to ask. I'm here, ready to be found by those who aren't bothered to look. I kept saying, I'm here, I'm right here, to a nation that ignored me. I reached out day after day to a people who turned their backs on me, people who made wrong turns, who insist on doing things their own way. Listen, this verse is not suggesting that God is passively waiting for us to discover him. He is actively seeking us, but rather that, that God is going to force us to him. He opens up all the paths and the doorways in order for us to see that grace and to accept that grace, that grace that brings us from a place of spiritual blindness into a remarkable relationship with him. And guess what? Our great alignment happens when our relationship with God is aligned completely with his will. Now, what we'll see on December 21st may not be the Christmas star, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that if we keep our eyes on the wonder and the wondering of God, that's what matters, that we're looking, that we're seeking and remembering, as John 1 in verse 5 says, Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness. That light is the Messiah whose birth we celebrate this coming Thursday. Thanks for tuning in. This Sunday, we will be back in limited worship in the sanctuary, social distancing, of course, disinfecting our hands and wearing masks. And we will be in sanctuary also on Christmas Eve at five o'clock. Of course, if, you're, uh, if you feel safer being at home, yes, we will always be broadcasting on Facebook Live. And we can't wait to all be together one way or the other. God bless you and Merry Christmas.